When it comes to assembling and soldering PCBs like this, there are a lot of different approaches you can take. Sometimes I will hand place and hand solder each individual component, but if I have a lot of boards to do, it's definitely faster to order a solder stencil like this. However, solder stencils can be tricky to get right. In my experience, if I don't have them perfectly flat, I'll often deposit too much solder paste, which causes problems down the road. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In this video, let's see if I can solve this problem using my shop vac. To start off, I want to demonstrate the technique that I've been using for years. It's the tried and true method. I see everybody else use it. The idea is that you use spare boards to create a perimeter around the board that you want to apply the solder paste to. So for example, I'm going to use this macro pad PCB, which I did in a previous video, and I'm going to set it down here and use the spare boards to create sort of a perimeter. And once I do that, I can use tape to tape these boards down so that they don't move. I'm curious though as to how long this takes. So I'm gonna take out my phone and I'm gonna use the stopwatch app to time myself to see how long this takes. That's the calculator app. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna place all these boards here and we'll see how long it takes me. I think this is good. I'm just gonna add one more piece of tape here. Okay, so now I can slide each board in and out. But now here comes the hard part. I need to align the holes in my stencil with all of the footprints. And once I've got them aligned, I've gotta carefully <laughs> tear off some tape and place it down, but I don't wanna cover any of the holes up. So I've gotta place this along the edge. So let's see how long that took me two minutes and eight seconds. It didn't take an enormous amount of time, but the process is a little finicky. You can see that the stencil has a little bit of an air gap and that has always bothered me. And stencils work best when they are perfectly flat against the PCB. There's gotta be a better way to do this and I think I have an idea. So let's remove this solder stencil and bring the PCB over here to this workbench. I was thinking about CNC router tables and I've seen people use a vacuum table or draft table to hold down their workpiece. And it's surprisingly strong. I was kind of shocked to see how well these vacuum tables work to hold the workpiece down. Maybe if I can use my shop vac to somehow hold the stencil down to the PCB, I'll have a nice flat interface and I'll get much better results with the solder paste. Let's grab my shop vac and see if this idea is gonna work. It might be a failure from the start. That worked surprisingly well. Now, obviously the edges aren't getting any suction, so they were still peeling up, but if I could figure out some way to apply an even suction across the whole surface area, I think this might work. Let me show you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I need to create a box like this. And then in the center of the box, we're gonna have the PCB something like this. And then we're gonna need to have the stencil kind of sit on top of that. I also need to include some features that will help me align the PCB and the stencil so I don't have to do that by eye. The last thing is that I need to attach the vacuum hose on here. So I need to have some sort of feature like this and I'll model in some sort of loft in there so that this can be attached to a vacuum hose like that. I wanna be able to use this for other circuit boards. So I think this needs to be in multiple pieces. We'll have the main base, and then we'll have an insert that can be customized for a different size PCBs. With all of this in mind, I'm ready to start 3D modeling this on my computer. And the nice thing is, is that I don't have to take physical measurements because the circuit board and the stencil were both designed digitally on the computer. So I can just bring those models right into my modeling software. The very first thing is I need to create sort of an insert that is going to hold the PCB. So I created a sketch and I extruded that out and I created a little shelf. So the PCB is going to actually fit inside this and I wanna make sure that I give myself enough clearance so that I can easily slide it in without it moving around too much. 
Then the next thing I need to do is kind of add a second little shelf. And that's where the solder stencil is going to, to fit. And it's aligned with the PCB. So I don't have to visually align the stencil with the PCB. My jig should do that for me. So that's gonna save me some time. Then I just added some fillets because both the PCB and the stencil had rounded corners. So now that takes care of the insert. The next thing I need to do is kind of create the actual vacuum table. So I extruded a big box like this, and now we've got sort of a hollow space that the vacuum pressure can apply on the PCB. The next thing I need to do is to create a way for me to remove the stencil and the PCB. So I kind of created these little divots that allow you to get kind of the tip of your finger in there and pull out the PCB and stencil. The final thing that we really need is to create the adapter for the vacuum hose. And I think that was kind of the hardest part of the 3D modeling process because I had to create uh, a sketch plane that was kind of offset at an angle. But once I had that all set up, I was able to make a loft between the hose adapter and our box and it looks really good. I'm happy with how this turned out. And now I'm ready to 3D print this thing to see if it's gonna work. I just pulled this off the printer and let's see what worked and what didn't. So the first thing I need to check is how well the circuit board fits in my little shelf here, the slot I made for the circuit board. And it looks like I actually didn't give it enough clearance. So I need to add a little bit of dimension there so that this circuit board fits in there. Right now it's, it's actually not even going all the way in. So that's something I need to fix. Let's try the stencil and see how that works. Okay, that does go in, but I do have a little bit of slop there so I can tighten up that dimension. The bigger question is, is the base. So this goes like this and then the insert kind of slides in here like this. And I can see that I also left way too much slop in that dimension. So I can tighten that up so that the insert is a little bit cleaner and slides right in. I'm looking at this a little closer and I noticed something that I already don't like. There is a tiny little tight radius gap thingy here uh, that I didn't model very well and it's bugging me. So I'm gonna fix that in the next version. Um, but most importantly, does the shop vac hose fit? Let's test this out. Yeah, that goes on there, but again, I probably got a little bit too much slop in there, so I can tighten that up. So let's go make those changes and we'll reprint version two. Wow, that was easy. So this one still has its supports on there. While I'm removing the supports, I wanna talk about the cool thing about this design is that if I wanna use this with a different PCB, I don't have to actually reprint this whole thing. All I need to do is to design a custom insert for the next PCB and just print that out. And that goes in here just like this. So let's see if all my changes worked. Oh yeah, that's a much better fit. And the little holes for my fingertips work really well. Uh, let's check to see if the PCB fits in there. So much better. I nailed that dimension. Always feels nice when you get that right. And the stencil. So actually the stencil does have a little bit of wiggle room, but that allows me to fine tune the alignment with the footprints below. So I'm not too worried about that. This is really good. I'm optimistic about this. I think it's gonna work, but we won't know until we connect it up to the shop vac. And just like before, I'm curious to see how long this process takes. So I'm going to start my stopwatch and see how long it takes. All right, so the first thing is to insert the PCB, which works great. I got the clearance just perfect. We will throw that thing on there and it already sort of aligns it and I can fine tune that right before I turn on the vacuum. We put that insert in there so this is ready to put solder paste on. And as you can see, that was so much faster than the previous method that I used to use. It only took like 35 seconds. Granted, I did have to model and 3D print all these parts, but that was kind of a one-time investment. And now I have this ready for the next time I need to solder these boards. I'm gonna put some solder paste on here. And before I turn the vacuum on, I just wanna make sure the alignment is perfect. Overall, I think that worked pretty well. I'm going to remove the stencil. Perfect. 
That worked so well. As I was using the squeegee to move the paste around, everything stayed in place and this seemed to work really well. I do wanna point out that I'm looking at the footprint here for you too, and it's a, an integrated circuit that has really fine pitch leads on it. And before, when I would do something like this, it would deposit too much solder paste, and when I refloat it, I would get solder bridges and it would cause problems. But now using this method, it seems like it has the exact right amount of solder paste, and I'm not worried about solder bridges when I go to reflow this board. So to wrap this up, I wanna compare the previous tried and true method with my new solder stencil vacuum table. Did this work better? And the answer is, I think it kind of did. It was certainly faster to do, minus all of the time that it took me to model and print this out. I think I'm gonna be using this moving forward. I like that I don't have to worry about depositing too much solder paste and having solder bridges. If you wanna build a solder stencil vacuum table like this, I'm gonna have all the design files linked in maker.io. This circuit board is for a DIY custom macro pad that I built in a previous video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend it, and you can watch it on the DigiKey YouTube channel. My name is Zach, and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.